Most of the cricket loving people are quite aware of the Duckworth Lewis method or the DL method in short. It is used in limited overs cricket to calculate the revised target for the team batting in second innings when the match is interrupted once or multiple times by rain or other conditions. In this video we will understand what were the different methods used for target calculation before the DL method, how the DL method was invented and also the mathematics behind the DL method for calculating the revised target. So let's start. When the match is interrupted and the overs are lost, reducing the target is not as simple as reducing the runs proportionally with the overs lost without considering the number of wickets lost or available. Let team 1 be the team batting first and team 2 be the team batting second. Let's say team 1 gets all the 50 overs and 10 wickets to bat and it scores 240 runs. And if team 2 gets only 25 overs but all the 10 wickets to bat and if the target is reduced proportionally with the overs that is the target is set to 120 to tie and 121 to win in the 25 overs then team 2 has an advantage since it can bat aggressively in lesser overs with the same number of wickets available as compared to team 1. But the Duckworth Lewis method is an attempt to set a statistically fair target so that both the teams get equal opportunity of winning the match in spite of the interruption. Various different methods have been used previously. The first commonly used method is the average run rate method or the ARR method. This method sets the target of team 2 as team 2's new target is equal to team 1's average run rate achieved into overs available to team 2 plus 1. We can also express this as team 2's new target is equal to team 1's total into overs available to team 2 upon overs available to team 1 plus 1. This method only considers the run rate of team 1 in calculating the revised target. Let us see what are different flaws in this method. For team 2, it is easier to maintain a given run rate for a reduced number of overs, so it is an advantage for team 2. Another flaw was that the method takes no consideration of wickets lost, which is again an advantage for team 2. Since for example, in our previous case, if team 2 is chasing target 120 in 25 overs, and if it chases the target with score of 121 for the loss of 9 wickets, it would have certainly lost the match if there would have been a full innings of 50 overs. The next flaw was that it is unfair for team 1 if they unexpectedly lose some of their final overs in which they could have drastically increased their run rate by playing more aggressively. Another flaw was that if team 2's innings is interrupted then the method becomes irrelevant in calculating the target. The last match decided by the ARR method was the third final of the 1988-89 World Series Cup between Australia and West Indies. This is the summary of the match in which rain stopped play in second innings and West Indies won the match with 8 wickets by ARR method. By the Duckworth Lewis method, the target for West Indies would have been 139. After this match, the method was highly criticized by media and Australian captain Alan Border, leading to the development of another method of target calculation called as the most productive overs method, or in short, the MPO method by Australia, which sets the revised target for Team 2 as Team 2's new target from their total of X overs is equal to runs scored by Team 1 in their highest scoring X overs plus 1. While the ARR method highly favored team batting second, the MPO method favored team batting first. Let's see the flaws in this method. It effectively penalizes team 2 for their good bowling by ignoring their best overs since the target for X overs of team 2 depends only on the worst X overs bowled by team 1. Another flaw was that the target takes no consideration of wickets lost just like the ARR method. The next flaw was that substantial back work is required by the umpires and officials to calculate the revised target. And finally, if highest scoring X overs are all the non-maiden overs, then team 2 is left to beat team 1's actual score but with fewer overs, which highly favors team 1. In such cases, there was a modification in the revised target by reducing the target by 0.5% for each over lost. The MPO method was last used in the second semi-final of the 1992 World Cup between England and South Africa. Whose summary is this? In this match, when South Africa needed 22 runs from 7 balls, range stopped play for 12 minutes and the revised target became South Africa needing 21 runs from one ball, leading to a controversial effect in the match, in which the current Duckworth Lewis method would have set a target of 4 runs to tie and 5 runs to win in one ball. Finally, England won the match by 19 runs. After the match, when everyone was hoping to get a fair method for calculating the revised targets, two British statisticians Frank Duckworth and Tony Lewis came up with the currently used Duckworth Lewis or the DL method, considering it as a genuine mathematical problem statement to solve. The DL method was first used in international cricket in 1997 in second match of Zimbabwe vs England ODI series. The basis for DL method is the concept of resources or resource percentage. Every team has two resources while batting. 
number of overs left and number of wickets in hand a team's ability to score runs depends on only these two factors so resource percentage combines both these two factors and expressed in a percentage value there is one more concept that needs to be understood is the par score which is defined for team batting second it is the score required by team 2 to tie in a rain interrupted match and depends upon resources used by team 1 and resources available to team 2 Mathematically, Team 2's par score is equal to Team 1's score into Team 2's resources upon Team 1's resources. For example, if Team 1 has scored 240 runs using 100% of resources and Team 2 has only 80% of resources available, then par score for Team 2 becomes 240 into 80 upon 100, that is equal to 192. Now the question is, from where can we obtain these resource percentage values? By performing statistical studies, Duckworth and Lewis have created this table by which we can obtain values of different resource remaining percentage for every combination of overs left and wickets lost. So, for example, if there is a rain interruption when two wickets are lost and 30 overs are left in an innings, the resource percentage still left to be used is 67.3. So, the resource percentage used becomes 100 minus 67.3 that is equal to 32.7%. Now, let us understand different cases for calculating resource percentage used by a team in an innings. Let us make this table short for the purpose of better understanding. So the first case is, if team loses resource at the start of its innings. Let this be the timeline of the innings with the start representing 50 overs and 10 wickets available and the end representing 0 overs. Now let's say there is an interruption till the innings is reduced to 30 overs. So till then there is no play. After that the batting starts. At the start of batting, resource available is the percentage value corresponding to 30 overs and 10 wickets in the table. That is 75.1%. So the resources used for batting is 75.1% and since there is no interruption further, the total resources used by team becomes 75.1%. Now let's see the second case. So the second case is if team loses resource at the end of its innings. Let's again take the timeline, the start and the end of the innings. So let's say the batting was started initially and then got interrupted when 20 overs and 8 wickets were remaining and after that there was no play in the innings. The total resource is 100% and the resources available after interruption were resource percentage corresponding to 20 overs and 8 wickets that is 52.4% from the table. So the resources used for batting becomes 47.6% which are the final net resources used. Now let's see the third case. So the third case is if team loses resource in the middle of the innings. For this let's again take the timeline with the same end conditions. Total resources are 100%. Now let's say the first interruption is caused when 40 overs and 8 wickets were left after batting. So the resource percentage left after that is 77.8% from the table. Now there was no play for some time and some overs are reduced. Let's say play is reduced to 20 overs from here on. So there was no play in this time span and now the remaining resource available for batting is 52.4% from the table. So the net resources used for batting becomes 100 minus 77.8 plus 52.4 that is equal to 74.6%. Multiple interruptions has to be dealt in a similar way. Now coming back to our formula for par score and having understood the entire concept of calculating resources, we can say that team 2's target score is equal to team 1's score into resources available to team 2 upon resources used by team 1. In short, T is equal to S into R2 by R1. Now let us see some of the real examples of matches decided by Duckworth-Lewis method. Let us first see an example of stoppage in first innings. In a match between India versus England, which was the fourth ODI of the bilateral series in 2008, after rain interrupted play in the first innings, the match was reduced to 22 overs for each innings. In the first innings, India scored 166 for 4, and the revised target calculated by DL method was 198 for England. In the second innings, England scored 178 for 8 in the 22 overs available, which was more than India's score, but still it lost and India won the match by 19 runs via DL method. Let us see other example of stoppage in second innings. In a match between India versus Pakistan, which was the first ODI of bilateral series in 2006, in the first innings there was no interruption and India scored 328 all out. In return, Pakistan scored 3-1-1 for the loss of 7 wickets in 47 overs. When rain stopped play and further play was abandoned at that position, the par score for Pakistan was just 304. And since Pakistan had already crossed the par score, the result of the match was Pakistan won by 7 runs via DL method. Now let's also see an example of stoppage in both the innings. In a T20 match between Melbourne Stars versus Perth Scorchers, which was the second semi-final of the Big Bash League 2012-13, in the first innings, when the rain stopped play, 3 overs were reduced for both the innings and Melbourne Stars scored 183 for 2 in 17 overs. Then after the start of second innings, 
Ren again stopped play and overs were further reduced and the final revised target was set to 139 in 13 overs which per scorchers easily achieved and it won the match by 8 wickets by DL method DL method is the most appropriate method unless there are extreme situations for example when team batting first sets a large target than usual it is the most appropriate since it considers combination of both the overs left and the wickets lost also, the revised target that it calculates is either significantly greater than or less than the actual runs scored by team batting first, thus becoming favorable for both the teams depending on the situation of the match and the resources used by each team. Now lastly, let us also understand how the values of the table of resource percentages are calculated. The value obviously depends on the two factors, overs remaining U and wickets lost W. Let the runs that can still be scored be Z. So Z can be written as the function of U and W as Z is equal to Z0 into W into 1 minus E raised to minus B into W into U, which is exponential decay relationship where Z0 is called as the asymptotic average total score for unlimited overs in the W wickets available, and B is the exponential decay constant. Both these quantities vary with W only. So the resource percentage at a particular combination of U and W is given as P of U, W is equal to Z at that U and W upon Z at U is equal to 50 and U is equal to 0 for ODI cricket, which can be plotted in a graph like this. Thus, the DL method uses results obtained by significant research in statistics along with some realistic assumptions to arrive at most appropriate calculations and thus forms a great example of application of mathematics in diverse fields like sports.